Okay, um, so hello everybody. You're all very welcome to the NALA webinar. Um, we're delighted to have Pauline Hensey with us today. Pauline's going to chat to you about remote learning with literacy students and from the theory of good practice to delivery. And um, one very small piece of housekeeping before we start. Um, for those of you just joined in the last two minutes, the questions that we're going to take are in your questions box. So that's if you that's on your toolbar on the right hand side of your screen. If you can't see your toolbar, you should be able to see a small yellow box with a white arrow in it. Click on that arrow and it'll open out your toolbox and go down to the bottom of your toolbox and you should see questions. You can write in your questions there. So during the webinar, Pauline might throw out questions for you. You can write in your ideas, your suggestions, or at the end when you have questions for Pauline. And at the end, I'll leave everybody muted and I'll read out those questions for Pauline. So listen, um, all the best and over to you, Pauline. Thanks a million, Fergus, and good afternoon, everyone. It's a beautiful here in Dublin, so I hope it's good where you are. As Fer Fergus said, my name is Pauline, and I've been involved in adult education, and particularly adult literacy, for many years. More recently now, I'm working um, with the distance learning service with uh, NALA. So today, uh, the title of the webinar is Applying Good Practice to Online Learning. Probably the title might be a little bit ambitious because I think what I'll be doing this afternoon is probably just raising some questions, you know, um, around this. Uh, how do we actually apply good practice to our online learning with students? I suppose it's about starting a discussion about how we can bring what really are well rehearsed kind of adult. Uh, education approaches that we use in our face-to-face -face tuition and learning-centered approaches online to the to the online learning environment. And we kind of know, I'm sure all of you know, that these kind of approaches where the learner is at the heart of the matter are vital really for this for a successful, both for a successful feeling for learners, but also a successful outcome. Now, online learning is not new in adult literacy. There are many examples of blended learning spaces where learners are kind of using online tools or platforms, such as obviously the Learn with NALA, the Write On platform, and many others. But mostly they're supported in a, in a lot of cases by face to face tuition, um, where, where learners are also learning with peers and with a tutor. Of course, the recent closure of our schools and colleges and other adult learning centres has meant that face-to-face -face support has been, it's no longer available. And at one level, this is kind of very disruptive and also disquieting, you know, disquieting, particularly when we know the kind of challenges that adult literacy learners face. But I suppose at another level, it's going to bring about change and it bring, can bring about increased opportunities. And I suppose this webinar is one example of that. I mean, NALA can no longer run their, their kind of um, tutor forums. And so the webinar is how they're choosing to do that. Um, and like today, as I say, many of us or many of you are trying now to support learners in this new situation by offering online learning. Um, and there are loads of platforms that people are involved in, Google Meets and Zoom um, and Blue Button, WhatsApp. And today, I'm not really looking in detail at the platforms, although I kind of will be showing you one and will be talking about some of the features on some of them. More I'm kind of think, going to thinking about or talking about is how the way learning happens on these platforms. In other words, how can we ensure that learners are the heart of the matter and that the process takes account of how learners learn best? So this is kind of the first webinar I've done. So um, hopefully the technology will work for me. So just to an outline of what I'm hoping to do today. Um, first, I kind of think, just want to go through the key insights into how adults learn. There are lots of, inf lots of studies about how adults learn best. And really what I've done is picked out maybe the key insights. Um, it's not a full picture. Um, 
And then I'm hoping to look at what are the challenges to bringing these approaches to the online setting. And I really think here, um, Fergus said about you maybe, you know, giving your suggestions. I'm sure you're there thinking about these challenges uh, now that we're working more online with learners. I'm hoping then that to give some suggestions, of course, these are tentative because like us all, I've limited experience of this, this new platform. And finally, to look at um, some resources. So let's look at the key insights first. And I think these will be familiar to um, kind of to many of you uh, working in adult literacy. So how, how, what are our understandings of how adults learn? And the first key point is that learning, learning is fundamentally social that learners, the emphasis here is on learners working together, not alone. Collaboration is part of this picture. Learners building new skills, new knowledge together, as I said, peer to peer. And in this way, learning can bring about a greater sense of belonging, being part of a learning community. Uh, so belonging is a, a huge dimension of this. The learner feels they're part of a group um, that they can look for support from this group. So the first key understanding is this social element, that learning is a fundamental social process. And the next one is around learning being active, but really it's an act of doing and participation. And they, what studies would say is the depth of our learning will depend on the depth of our engagement with it. Mo some of you might be, and I'm hoping you can see this, but I'll read out the kind of main points here. Some of you might be um, familiar with this pyramid of retention. What do we retain? What do we remember? And they say, um, that we remember 5% of what we've heard at a lecture. And I mean, maybe when you think of what's happening today, that's kind of a startling figure. Um, we learn 10% of what we read or we retain 10% of what we read. But I think it's really interesting to say from discussion groups, we retain 50% and practice by doing 75%. And what's really interesting in terms of learners working with other learners is teaching others 90% that can help us remain or retain 90% of what we learn. So active learning is a key element of how adults learn best. And another element of this about learning is that participation, that learning in this way allows learners to move from the margin to the center. I have a quote here that, from a learner who's talking about um, what learning meant for him. And he, he said, from my point, going back to education has given me a chance to participate in helping my kids to read and write. One time I was standing outside the square. My kids were helping my kids. I wasn't able to move. Now I'm able to sit down at the table. And I think that's a lovely metaphor, the idea of uh, learners as part of their journey, standing outside a square, not being able to participate in a literacy event like teaching their children to read. And with learning, being able to become more centrally involved in an event. And so the next key thing uh, and linked to that um, is that uh, learning builds on experience so that the learner's experience is there as part of the uh, room. We, we kind of invite learners to talk about their previous knowledge of what we're teaching them or their previous experience or even their previous feelings about what we're doing at the moment. And we have discussion about with learners about where does this new learning fit with other stuff I know? So that um, learning, you know, um, learning builds on previous experience experience is another important element. And linked to that, of course, is that learning, learn, learning has fundamental emotional dimensions. I don't think you have to too long be working in the field of adult literacy to understand that how learners feel about their previous experiences. Sometimes that can be to do 
Sometimes that can be about how they feel about school. Sometimes it can be about how they feel about a particular text, like a form. Um, I know the increased need to fill out, for example, PPS numbers has really kind of brought up an emotional dimension for learners recently. And um, sometimes learners can can kind of feel bad about how people comment maybe on their own use of language. Um, Kathleen McLaughlin is um, a researcher in Glasgow and um, when she talked to learners, one of them said, if you really want to hurt me, talk badly about my language. So uh, uh, learners, learners learn best when they feel good about uh, when they feel good about what they're doing, you know, and, and learning has this emotional dimension that we have to kind of be careful of. And of course, linked to this is learning, learning flourishes where there is trust. Again, um, studies have said that where there's trust, there's less fear. And where there's less fear, learners feel they can move forward. And the last kind of piece here about how adults learn is one that's kind of captured by the phrase learner centered um, and it's this that we want to learn what's relevant to us um, and that learners kind of from really learners need to we need to engage with what our learners needs and um, what are learners uses of literacy where do they want to take it and again i kind of feel that this is something in the field of adult literacy we're very good at doing and um, looking at what do learners what what is relevant to the learners and that becomes the curriculum and then how do learners best learn how do learners best learn and that becomes the process so i'm going to look really that now at if these are key best practice scenarios for how adults learn and um, how do these kind of translate when we move to the online environment? And I'm going to just suggest some challenges here. And I'm going to move actually from this PowerPoint onto a different platform. So um, if you just bear with me for a second. Okay. So um, I'm looking, when I've thought about this, the piece that I thought about first was the challenge of creating a social presence for learner, learners, um, a presence where um, they can feel part of a learning community, where they can collaborate together, where they can get that belonging feeling that I spoke about earlier. Um, and again, um, the kind of research has kind of shown that studies have shown that when, when we move online the reliance on the tutor can become much more intensive and the connections of students with their peers can become an issue so learners miss a lot um, when this connection is weaker with their peers so the kind of things they miss or the kind of things we we kind of have heard about when we talk to learners, I mean, one of the things is they miss the reassurance they get from working with groups and with other learners, just kind of looking over the shoulder. Am I meant to be doing this? Am I doing this the right way? Kind of groups, face to face learners use the group as a gauge for themselves, a way of checking things out. Um, it's also a way of them getting feedback or oh, that's really good or how did you do that it's a way of getting ideas and practical advice or you know you know some learners saying i found this a great way of remembering that spelling so one of the things that learners can miss by the lack of peer to peer connection is this sense of reassurance um, another piece that learners miss and that they talk about is confidence uh, one learner talked about the confidence, it gives you a certain degree of confidence about the whole thing, that other people are taking the time to help you over the hump, the confidence that others are willing to act on your behalf. And a third piece that working in a group can mean for learners is commitment. It can help learners actually commit to this, to this situation. One learner described it like this, there is that lovely group feeling of getting something done, of sticking at it. Yes, we've pulled together and we did it. Now, I'm not saying this is absent from the online 
space, that kind of peer-to-peer -peer group learning is absent from the online space. But I am saying that it can be more difficult and we might need to work harder or use the tools in a particular way to make sure this is happening. As Fergus said, I did, you know, you now at this stage might have ideas as to how you kind of use the tools to help learners connect with each other. Um, I know, for example, Zoom allow for breakout groups. I mean, I was in in that situation myself when I was taking a course and the tutor put us into breakout groups with other students and it immediately changed the atmosphere where the tutor was no longer a presence in the room and you were just there with other students. So that facility is there. I know it's on Zoom and it could be on other platforms as well. Um, I know other pla most platforms have a facility just like you're doing now um, for learners to write up questions or um, have a chat room. Um, the, the facility I'm on now, the platform I'm not now is called Padlet, P-A-D-L-E-T, and they have uh, discussion groups where, you know, this could be sent to learners through, um, through an email and learners can write out, you know, uh, write in something and as I'm doing now um, and post it up or you know they can put photographs up or notes to themselves up and this discussion group might be about you know a particular piece of work that you're doing in the class or it might just be about how did you find that session how are you finding the learning and um, it's a public space that's important for learners to know um, it's a, the emphasis here is really on engagement, you know, learner to learner. It's really not about spelling. Uh, I think it's kind of a step for learners to kind of engage in these kind of space, particularly when we're thinking of learners who might not feel that confident about um, reading and writing. But it's an empowering space if learners can be encouraged to do it. Now, as I said, <laughs> you probably have lots more suggestions as to how we can use the tools to to uh, help support this peer to peer connection. Really, what I'm saying is we have to think about this and include it, give space to it when we move to work online with our adult learners, because as I've pointed out before, they gain so much and they lose a lot if that's not part of um, the session. Uh, the other piece that can be difficult um, and um, is this piece here, it's checking in, how is it going, getting feedback from learners as to how, how they're feeling about the whole thing or, you know, what matters to them. Um, we're, we've lost the visual clues. I can see no one at the moment. So I have absolutely no idea, uh, you know, um, what point might have mattered more than others. It's a, it's a kind of, um, and, and, and when we're dealing with learners, you know, you'd put a text maybe down, you can often see if there's resistance to it or if learners feel, yeah, this is actually what I want to be doing. So this this piece, how's it going? What matters to you? What do you want to do next? That is another, I think, one that we have to pay particular attention to when we move online. Checking in, you know, it regularly is really important. I would be saying we probably are doing that anyway in our lessons, but I'd say it's even more important when we move online. Um, again, there are some icons we can use. You're using them themselves. This one here, the thumbs up, thumbs down. Some some um, platforms have smiley faces that learners can use. I actually think for this one, we actually probably need to at some time during the, during the, the number of sessions, ring learners and see, check in with them that it's okay. I think we have to try and engage in active learning methodologies um, and think about, you know, what's, you know, the best way of, of kind of engaging learning in that way. Um, I had a, this is where, yeah, um, there is a very good resource on active learning methodologies. I'm just going to open it there here for you. And it's it's called, sorry, 
just need to get the glasses on, apologies. It's called Active Learning Methodology. It's online and it's, um, it's a free resource and it has hundreds of ways that we can check in with learners um, about um, how they're feeling about what we're doing. And has lots of lovely, simple ideas um, for, and I will, I will um, make sure that Fergus knows um, where you can get this, but it's a wonderful resource. For example, one of the ideas they have is, very, is a very simple um, uh, minish paper, and it literally asks learners two questions as they're leaving the session. What was the most important point made in today's class? What unanswered questions do you have? And learners could be encouraged to put that up on a discussion board or even to verbally talk about it. Um, again, you probably have your own ideas there and you might write them into the discussion group about how we can check in with learners to see how things are going. My point is that well, I think we have to work a bit harder at this um, in the online space. Um, Pauline, just yeah. on your comments, I see a, a, a good suggestion from Michelle Howard. Yeah. She's saying, work on Google Classroom, where you share documents that can be edited by the learners in groups. It's like Fantastic. team Fabulous. projects. Super. That's absolutely super. Yeah. That sounds like a really active way of engaging learnings together. Yeah. Really lovely. Thanks, Fergus. So, um, the next challenge, I, I, I think, is how do we get learners from the beginning to, to kind of engage in this space? It, it, it has to be for some learners. For some, they're very tech savvy and it might be such a um, challenge, but for others, um, it must be daunting. You know, what skills do I need? Uh, how should I behave when I go online? What about the language or the terminology? A learning curve for everyone, including ourselves, being honest, including myself, you know, yet an, op an opportunity as well for learners to learn lots of new literacies in this space. Research is showing here, connecting early with phone calls to learners is important at this stage when we're setting up our groups or when we're starting our groups online, just to tease out how learners, you know, anxieties they might have about it. Um, they talk about the fact that you can co-create here. How do you think it might work? What, you know, how do you think um, learning might best happen for you when we're online? Um, they talk about students needing a very high structure at the beginning. So a bit like what was happening at the beginning of our webinar, webinar here, Fergus was welcoming, welcoming everyone onto the space. Um, uh, I think you've got to verbalize what you're doing. I'm just unmuting my mic here. It's down in the bottom hand corner. So, you know, explicitly talking through uh, what's happening on the, on the online. And of course, other learners who are tech savvy might be able to help uh, some that would be more challenged by the technical side to find and to work out where their um, unmute button is or where their video um, button is. Some, for example, would suggest that it's not a bad idea to send out a hard copy of the steps needed to um, actually get onto the particular platforms you're using. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm really inviting you here to kind of give to bring in your suggestions as to when we're starting off with learners online, how can we encourage them to become involved? The next challenge I feel is around context. The context has totally changed. Learners, you know, kind of were used to walking into centres, probably feeling very at home in these centres. This was this was the place where I did my, you know, my literacy work. Um, now that's changed. You know, for some they're learning at, it's at home. For others, it might be in kind of shared accommodation centres. Others, as we know, might you know not have any particular place they can go to. So obviously this can create for some issues around confidentiality. I mean, they might not have told people at home they're actually what they're doing. Um, for others, it's kind of a challenge around physical time and space. How do I organize time and space that's quiet enough for me to engage in an online learning situation? You know, there are definitely increased distractions when we're at home. Now on the flip side, I have found with some learners that suddenly they're getting support from, 
you know, family members. And it's almost like, you know, they learn, they, almost like the family home has become a bit of a learning learning hub. You know, they're, they're all, you know, they're sharing the crosswords, for example, that I might send out or um, might email to them with their partners. Um, you know, so that it expands the learning into the whole family. And that's a really been a really kind of um, great thing to see. The last challenge I want to talk about is around fairness. I really think that the scenario where we've had to move online is probably marginalising learners that are most disadvantaged. And my concern is that these learners will be excluded from the support now and maybe future support or future opportunities unless we pay attention to this, for example, affordability. Um, like the, be, before COVID, obviously libraries were open and some learners could use that space to, you know, to kind of hook into the internet. Um, accessibility um, um, is an issue. Technical support is an issue. So I kind of feel that fairness is something we have to keep an eye on here um, when we're talking about online. Um, learning. So I'm going to kind of leave it there for the moment. I think there's an opportunity for us now maybe to look at your own suggestions or if you have any questions. Um, just to summarise, um, good practice means learners should be at the heart of the matter. We know that well. Learners learn best when they're socially connected to a group with each other and with a tutor and that learning needs to be active. And but really what I looked at today are some of the challenges about bringing this to an online space. I'm really looking forward to, he to hearing from Fergus and um, some of your suggestions uh, or some of your questions. Thanks very much. Pauline, thanks a million. That was really great, really insightful. It was great to hear again about the, uh, the theory and then to link it into what you can do. And we are getting some suggestions in. So thanks a million Pauline for a lovely presentation. Um, so as Pauline said, if you have any questions now for her, you can type them into the questions box. So I'll just read out Pauline some yeah. questions um, and ideas that have come through. So Great. sometimes it's comments, sometimes it's a question. So Anne Walsh is saying, unfortunately, I am finding that some learners are not engaging at all. Should we revert back to posting work with Unpost? Well, I, I do a combination of both, and um, I, 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 I do send some hard cop copies of materials to learners, as well as using online platforms. Um, I think it's going to take a while for people to feel confident about that. You know that not having a bit of paper in front of them is actually learning especially when we're talking about reading writing actually because active learning active reading methods for example mean things like underlining words and etc cetera, etc cetera. so i have to say there are times when i do both okay thanks and um, pauline there's a, a tip here from mary curtis mary saying uh, i use smiley emojis for how's it going rather than expect yeah. the learner to type yeah yeah brilliant um, yeah. Brilliant. Um, then there's a, a suggestion from Elizabeth O'Brien. Um, yes, I first of all call the learner to give them support. Then I give them one-to-one -one support on how to set up set up online right. for I presume before getting them into a, gr a group class or even a one-to-one -one class online. Um, Sinead Hurley is asking. I have a student who doesn't have the basic skills. He he has difficulty identifying the letters of the alphabet. I'm looking for suggestions to how I can help him. That's from Sinead Hurley. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I'm working with a learner um, who would have kind of similar kind of skills. It's very challenging. Um, and yet there are the learners who we want to keep engaged because when the centre is open again, you know, they're the learners that we want to invite back in so that the skills can be built up um, I am struggling yeah I do struggle with that um, yeah Fergus does there, Joan have anything there 
Uh, okay. Anyone who's any anyone has any suggestions for that last question? If you type them in, please, I'll read them out then as I move further down. Um, Michelle Howard saying, unfortunately, our biggest struggle is that learners do not have home support. Yeah. Um, then Mary Curtis saying, yes, it's great when my learners are encouraged at home, but unfortunately, there are still many families that can put someone down for trying to learn. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and context is really important. And being able to support learners through that is really important. I mean, I've had some learners that work in their cars rather than work at home because they're not getting that kind of supported space. So I really think we have to recognize this that, you know, that when we're talking about online learning, it's not equal for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um... Claire Hatcher is asking, and this can be for Pauline and for anyone else who's listening, they can type in an answer to Claire's question. Claire is asking, what do you use to get learners evaluation of their online learning? Hmm. Well, um, it has to be one of the questions we ask. I think you're absolutely right. Is it Catherine? It's Maybe. Claire Hatcher. Claire. Joan, have you anything there either? I, can I can I refer oh, to sorry, Claire? Pauline, no, sorry. no. Can I can I can I suggest that she looks at that? Uh, the, I think firstly they have to ask that question: How are you finding it? Uh, you know, as opposed to around the learning, the reading and writing bit. Um, but I think the publication I pointed there, the active learning methodologies, have lots of suggestions about ways that we can ask those kind of questions. So I would suggest, you know, um. And I absolutely agree, we have to ask that question. Indeed, I do think Nala might look at that as a possible research in the future. Joan, have you anything to add on that one on getting learners' evaluation of the online learning? Or it's a hard question to say, that would be an ecumenical matter and I'll move on to the next question. No, I mean, oh. even just uh, to text the learners after a session, if, you know, depending on their skills, you know, it, it totally depends on their skills. So it could be a phone call afterwards, could be a text. If you've got more tech savvy learners, you might do a you know a Google Survey Monkey, Google any of these tools. So depending on the level your learner is working at and how they like to engage, you just respond. Any you're just asking the question just in a different way, you know. Okay, thanks. But you start by asking question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Okay, Pauline, there's a nice comment here from Edel Flannery. She's saying the early part of your presentation today brought me back to Knowles. Very interesting to hear its relevance in the sphere of online work. Okay, great. Thanks a million. Thanks, Elia. Um, yeah. Uh, Elizabeth well, yeah, O'Brien she... is texting in a comment. Even when you're online, it's important to listen to the learner, and she's got listen in bold. Super. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so actually, can I say to... something there? Yeah. Fergus, I think actually, you know, that active listening that you suggested, I think that's why tutors often find it so much very tiring that the online learning, the online teaching bit is really, really tiring because we're listening so intensely and um, because, you know, to do it well, we have to listen well. And a lot of people are saying, you know, including teachers teaching, say, secondary school, etc., that it's, just, it's you can only really, you need to engage for a shorter amount of time. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fiona Brogan's asking, would we be able to get a copy of Pauline's PowerPoint? Yes. Uh, we'll send everyone who's registered for today a copy of Pauline's PowerPoint and we're recording this webinar. So if you wanted to listen back to anything that Pauline said, you can, we, we, I'll send out that link in, a, in about probably tomorrow. Um, uh, Paula O'Connor saying, uh, it's a pity the centre's closed with little notice. When centres reopen, we can ensure all or most are able to use a, small a smartphone mm -hmm. for connection to remote classes, Zoom, etc. That's yeah. true. Thanks, Paula. Yeah. Um, Fergus, can I just bring in one other thing there? I never mentioned it, so I just want to say it around security for the on these platforms. You know, it's just something that we, in terms of the platform themselves being secure because there have been incidents of platforms being bombed, you know, so I think it's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, particularly yeah. if we're setting up, 
if we're setting up Zoom classes independent maybe of an institution, you know? Yes. Uh, just, yeah. There, Fergus, Adrian, Miguel was asking about encouraging continuous engagement that learners are starting to drop off. And I think something Pauline said earlier, uh, peer learning, if there's a, a platform or a way of en encouraging learners to support each other. So um, there's different ways of doing this. One of them would be if you have a tool like a Padlet, maybe the, the uh, learners could write a short story where everybody puts in a sentence. So you're relying on your colleague to put in a sentence. Or if you're, say, doing something around spelling and it's the sentence of, you know, the rule I before E except after C, and maybe the tutor might write the first sentence incorrectly, the learner comes back, corrects it, but they must leave a challenge for their next student. So that kind of engages people that they, they're relying on each other. So it might help in the case there where, you know, you want to engage learners to stick with it. Okay, thanks. Um, Dolores McGeady has a question which can be for Pauline or Joan or anybody. Uh, have you any experience of skills, so basic IT classes being taught online? IT online. Yeah, no. in the distance learning service, we would work with a number of learners. Um, what we find is that uh, a lot of learners, if you send them a hard copy first, they can work their way through. So you start with smaller tasks and then increase it. And um, it can work very well sometimes, but sometimes it can be just very frustrating. So you've got to kind of get the balance. Okay. There, think... Can I just say one thing there? There's very good resources from Age Action Ireland on um, teaching teaching online, teaching um, learners uh, basic skills for smartphones, etc. Yeah, okay, it's a resource, Age we'll... Action Ireland. John, we can put up that link as well, actually. Okay. There's a nice good comment here from Mary Curtis. She's saying, I think it's to do with motivating students and keeping them engaged. She said, keep phoning them every week and keep the engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Michelle Howard has a comment in a lot of online platforms for ESL or ESOL, which are very good also for literacy learners. Yeah, agree. Yeah. yeah. And they're very generous. They have the resources there, the really generous ESL. Um, you know, people are very generous with the materials and ideas. Agreed. Okay, there's a, a suggestion in from Scott Wilson saying, for low literacy, maybe videos demonstration posted on YouTube and then text the link. That's a great idea. Yeah, you know, how to, yeah. yeah actually, just in terms of that, um, in the, in the, Padlet platform, I just kind of will quickly show this because I know we're over the time. Um, you can actually do a voiceover. So you can actually put, put a piece of text up and um, you can record it so that learners can actually hear um, the text. So I just. It gives you a certain amount of confidence about the whole thing. There's yeah, so that might be something as well that you could use with learners who have very basic skills. You know, if they can get onto this platform, you, mm -hmm. it's an email they need. You know, you can just send it through an email. Okay, there's a comment from Tracy Kieran's here. Tracy saying, I'm finding that some learners don't have the devices to work yeah. from, and which yeah. is very true. Okay, there's a an inf very interesting suggestion here from Ellen Dillon. Uh, suggestion for Sinead. Sinead must have put in a question earlier, I can't remember, but as I read it, we might realise what the question was. I'm finding over the years that Phonics International is an excellent resource. Pauline, I have a learner similar to yours and Sinead's, and I'm finding that showing them the sound, letter, yeah. correspondence, mm -hmm. and the concept of letters and letter groups being code for sound or speech really clarifies that and brings great understanding. My yeah. learner is doing very, very well. So Super. thanks Thank a million, you. Ellen. What do you I'll think of that, Pauline? Yeah, Alpha really. Tool Amiga is a very good resource as well, I think, for certain learners. Yeah, and Toe by Toe is another one. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for that, actually, because the particular learner I'm working with is definitely tuned into phonics. It seems to work for him, you know. Yeah, great. Thanks so okay. much for that. Question from Adrienne McGill, a tough one, so you can use the ecumenical matter if you want to dodge. Can I have this. a biscuit? Can I have a biscuit? Yeah, you can have a Jaffa cake. Any advice on encouraging continuous engagement? 
starting to lose some students? Yeah, well, do you know, there is a sense where, I mean, how long, I mean, are you kind of limiting? In other words, is it easier for people to engage if we say this is happening for six weeks? This, you know, there's a start at the beginning, people regroup. Uh, uh, you know, if it's an open, on, continuous um, learning piece online, is that difficult? You know, remember, people have to organize themselves so terribly different, so terribly differently when it's online. They have to organize themselves at home. We're coming into summer. You, their, ch people's children are going to be off school. I'm just wondering. I think this is all just really, I'm just throwing this out now. I'm not saying it's in any way thought about clearly or investigated. I'm wondering online, do you need kind of shorter, distinct courses, you know? Would that help people? Yeah. I'm not sure, Fergus. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, Pauline, here's a, a message from Stephen Minnan. Thanks, Pauline. That was an excellent example of an online presentation. So that's Thank positive. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> and Mary Curtis says, the learning triangle is excellent. Thank you, Pauline. You're very um, welcome. Thank you. A suggestion from Elizabeth O'Brien. I send a message re-individual evaluation to the individual on WhatsApp and the general one to the WhatsApp group. Yeah. So did everyone get that? She sends an ind a message to the individual student, yeah. an evaluation on WhatsApp and a general one to the WhatsApp group. That's that's a good idea. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah really good. Okay. I mean, so, uh, well, yeah, sorry if I was just, no, just no, you, last no. comment. But, you know, listening to people's suggestions, you can see the, the kind of the, the amount of kind of thinking that people have you know the thinking that people are doing and um, to try and encourage learners to stay and to learn online it's you know it's really yeah people are thinking right. hard aren't they yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's a great tip from Edel Flannery I think it's kind of following on the phonics tip there earlier um Edel says I've used some apps to help learners learn alphabet and vowels one is called don't touch the vowels. So that's available <laughs> on the app store. So I'll just repeat that. Don't touch the vowels. Yeah. This one learners can have on the phones and play like any app if they have the skills to do that. So yeah. okay. don't touch the vowels from the app store. Thanks, Adele. Okay. Uh, Breda Ryan is saying internet or lack of it is one of the biggest challenges we mm -hmm. face in rural areas. Yeah, yeah. both for yeah. students and tutors. Yeah. Catherine Tracy saying, thanks very much, Pauline. I think that was really comprehensive. I think this crisis has shown the possibilities of increasing the amount of learning support provided to learners, which is often just once a week for an hour or two. Yeah. I think many of us will be working with our learners to try and work towards this when we meet again. Joan or Pauline, if one of you can comment on that, I'm going to let the dog out. He's going to start barking. <laughs> I think you're right. I think definitely, as I said at the beginning, there's challenges, but it's actually there's opportunities in this too. And you know, it's a matter of us kind of over time, as people in adult literacy has always done, and um, looking at what works best and sharing those ideas, just as you're doing this morning. Yeah, great. Okay, thanks. Um, Teresa Barrett has a tip. She says, Google ABC English wall cards. That's ABC English wall cards are good for students starting with alphabet. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Teresa. Uh, Caroline Brennan, we've got about two minutes left. I'd say, Caroline, we've gone over, but sure, nobody minds. You can leave if you if you have to leave, guys. The eggs are boiling or whatever. Caroline Brennan saying, SoundCloud offers 180 minutes free recording. You can record audio instructions and send link to learner with low literacy skills, dyslexia, etc. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Caroline. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah. SoundCloud. Thanks a million. Right. Um, Paul O'Connor saying, I think the learners that have engaged in remote learning have benefited greatly and will be much more confident when our centres reopen. Yeah. Thanks for your presentation. Yeah. I got lots out of it, Pauline. Thanks, Paula. Paula. Connor. I agree with your point, Paula. Students who have engaged in mm. remote learning will, I'm sure their confidence reusing a phone or technology or Zoom or whatever they're using will have really 
been great for them. Okay, yeah. Sheen is saying, Pauline, I've really enjoyed this presentation. Thanks so much. I feel re-energized. Thank you, Sheena. Um, Mary Curtis is saying, I let QQI go and set tasks each week. Favorites, favorite food, drinks, places, recipes, music, plants. What will you do first after lockdown, etc.? Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. I get that. Good suggestion, Mary. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, Fiona Brogan is saying, thanks. Really helpful presentation. There's been such a rush to move online that it's easy to forget the importance of the basics in of adult education. Yeah. True, Fiona. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, and in addition to a rush, it's been a lot of pressure on a lot of people, you know, the whole thing has, has kind of built up and we were expected to perform really well, really quickly. And it does take time to build everybody's skills. Yeah. Okay, Maria Glavin, I think she's talking about evaluations here, but you can correct me if you think I'm wrong. She says, I send a hard copy on WhatsApp and then review it on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. WhatsApp is great for sending yeah, you know, a lot of students use WhatsApp. You know, take a photograph of what they've done, you see it immediately. It's fabulous. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Pauline, Angela Quinn and Sinead Hurley are saying things like great presentation, really enjoyed it. Thanks a million. Uh, same with Mary Curtis. She said lots of great ideas there. Thank you. Uh, Ellen Dillon is saying excellent presentation. Thanks so much. Really wonderful to hear you highlight the issues. And help that learn learn. So, Thanks so much. hold on, there's one or two more. Great, Emer O'Neill is saying, great ideas generated. Thank you, Pauline. Very helpful. It's good to know others are having the same issues. That's from Leslie Claffey. And Elizabeth O'Brien says, allow learners to share their screen, then you can see their computer. In this way, sorry, I've lost that there. In this way, they can demonstrate their skills. Great. If yeah. can Zoom allow that? sharing of screen yeah well yes. actually what you, one of the things you can do is you can hand over the screen to to students you know which yeah. is quite powerful if, if you feel they're you know if students are ready for that they, you can hand over just as you handed over the presentation to me there for this okay thanks okay um tracy karen's as everyone's writing in more comments are all moving up so you're about to read it and then it disappears from my screen and ah, in technology computers me i uh, tracy karen's a good <laughs> she's saying screencast omatic that's screencast omatic is good yeah. for recording videos to show how to use programs on computer i okay. use it and upload to youtube thanks tracy uh, and uh, just to plug one of our next um, webinar service, we will be looking at that uh, screen presso and other video options. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, yeah, we are interested, Paula yeah. O'Connor will be looking after those webinars. Yeah. That okay. On the yeah. The next five or six points are all, thanks for a great presentation, Pauline, from Breda, Emer, Audrey, Anne and Annette. So they're all saying okay. great presentation. Super. That is it. Uh, Dolores says, Hold on, Laura, is it moved as I was about to read out with my best Ulster Irish? Grandma give Ulig. Grandma give Ulig. What's the Ulig bit mean again? Everyone. Use all, maybe. Everyone. Use all. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Dolores, my, I did learn Donegal Irish, but I forgot it. De nada, okay. back in Spanish. You're yeah. welcome. De nada. De nada. Okay. De nada. Thanks, everyone. Okay. All, everyone's saying great Super. stuff. Uh, last, I believe, the last comment I'm reading out. Or maybe the second last one, sorry. Ellen Dillon is saying, Pauline, I have to say, I really appreciate you. You've highlighted that some of our most disadvantaged learners are marginalized and in danger of being excluded. So that's from okay. Ellen. And yeah, this is the last comment I'm reading out because we've gone way over. Carol mm -hmm. Neville saying, GDPR is always an issue with using, with using any FB based platform such as WhatsApp. Yeah. I know, for example, that. Dublin Dunleary ETB are not promoting this. Also, it's been flagged that some of the online platforms are free at the moment, but will this continue? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good point. That's from Carol. Okay, yeah. we're going to leave it there. There's more comments coming in from Emer, Scott, and Grace saying thanks a million, great. But we're going to have to leave it there because it's five to two. Um, <laughs> um, so I'd just like to thank Pauline again for a fantastic yep. presentation. Mm -hmm. You can You're see from the comments that mm -hmm. it really went down well and it re-energized yeah. people and 
Um, yes. Thanks so much, Pauline. Yeah, thanks, thanks for everyone. asking me. Thanks for oh, asking me. Yeah. Thanks for everyone for Super. tuning in and giving your ideas and your suggestions and comments. We get, we always get as many good suggestions from the audience as we do from anywhere else. So thanks for that. I'm going to end this now and I'll just say goodbye. And I hope you can get out for a walk and enjoy a bit of sunshine today. All the best. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm.